Simple as my mama said when I was very young She told me not to worry son, one day you'll be someone But here I am at 21, as loaded as a stagecoach shotgun I'm sorry mama, please don't look at me When I got to Oklahoma, I was 17 My papa taught me how to work and Lord, he was mean Working all day in that August heat And he taught me how to fish, my uncle taught me how to drink Well, I went to California and I had me a band And we played in all the bars in all the southern lands We played all night and we drank for free All of my boys and me Welcome back to the channel guys, long time in between episodes, but today, if you can see behind me, we are in the fabulous Bendelby Ranges. Let me tell you, what a place. Let's go. All right, good morning. It's not actually that early. I'm not very much a morning person. Anyway, we've got uh, 10 hours ahead of us. It's planned today, so just drive until, yeah, we get there, which should be about 3.30 maybe, which is good timing, I guess, just for me and the, and the pub. No problem, got some steaks for dinner tonight. Ah, cook them up. Might go for a quick fish, because we're camping on the Murray. And yeah, get up in the morning. I've got a five hour drive tomorrow in the Bendelby. Just a full driving up there, solo. I'm not gonna go extreme, but you never know what happens. car performed flawlessly. Anywhere past Wagga, I kinda filled up when the gauge said half a tank left. Um, I've got fuel in the jerry cans anyway, but I'm gonna save them for the Flinders Ranges and Bendelby, or on the way home. That's generally what I like to do. Always fill up my jerrys. If I'm going on a bit more of a remote, even though none of this is really remote, um, I like to do it anyway if I'm doing a trip, I should say, basically, what I do with the Jerry's is, it's fuel, right? You're gonna use it, yeah? So at the end of the day, I get home, the car, I still drive the car at home, so I just put the Jerry's in the car when I get home. It's just fuel, I don't have to go to the fuel station, you know, in, in another three weeks when I'm home. So you end up using it up anyway, so it's a good idea just to have it on you. Peace of mind, uh, good work. Dog slept the entire trip, the entire trip. <laughs> I was getting a bit sleepy. Usually I can pull good 10 hour days driving, 11 hour days driving, but something hit me today, I just couldn't be bothered. So, keen as, we'll get camp set up and uh, wait till it gets a bit dark and I'll light a fire. So, beautiful, throw a line in, see how we go. have a go at this spot it's not the most remote see some boats up there 
few people camping down there. Take a look at it though. Morning. Have a go. Mill pond. Might just uh, get this packed up and we will head to Bendleby. Always pretty good. Drive under the Dunlop tyre in South Australia. Pulled into a town called Morgan. It's a small little town on the Murray River. And I've just done some reading on the town. <laughs> it's only a very small town, but it was for a long time at its peak, uh, the second busiest port in South Australia behind Port Adelaide. So it was mainly um, pretty much wool is what they were doing. So that's amazing for a little town. Just those little things that you learn when you come to these little towns on why they were originated. How awesome is that? I smell a pub. Oh, oh stop it. The stone grill dining. Oh, oh, geez. My arm just twisted. Right up. Bendleby Rangers. We made it. Let's go and set up camp. Well, we made it to Bendleby Rangers. I'm super excited to be here. So keen. Uh, shout out to Charlie, the owner. Absolute legend of a bloke. Um, he's actually pointed me. This isn't the site that I booked. Um, he's pointed me here um, because if you're watching this, don't know when, but June long weekend, 2024, is next weekend, and it's actually a Monday today. So this site's free and he said this is one of his favorite spots on his own property to camp and he's uh pretty much given it to me so massive shout out thanks charlie when you get here you get a map of the bendaby rangers and a map of the hungry rangers um whoever it is that will be at the reception that will uh guide you through uh for me it was charlie he went through this map in detail for me on the uh, sort of ratings of the track, um, how long it's going to take. When I say ratings, it's out of 10, so 10 being the hardest, um, you know, one being the easiest. Um, how long it should take, um, where the best spots are, what he recommends, um, and it's pretty much got all the rules on there as well. So you can have dogs as well, about quarter past five at the moment, so I reckon we got another hour left of light maybe, so I was going to go uh, up to Sunset Ridge, because that's not far from here on the map, which is a great sunset. But if you can see behind me, the weather's not that great today, so I'll do that tomorrow night. Um, yeah, the good news is I'm here for a few nights. They give you firewood as well. A big bonus with these guys is you don't have to cut your own firewood. Um, they give you firewood on every campsite. So if you want extra, you can ask. So something pretty cool that Charlie told me about um, the Hungry Rangers, which is south and the Bendelby Ranges, which is a bit north of me, um, because I am camped pretty much at the bottom of the Bendelby Ranges. Um, even though the mountain ranges, they're not that far apart from each other, they actually have an entirely different ecosystem. So it starlings up, I don't know if you can see that on the, you should be able to. It'll do its thing now, just plug it in. It'll uh, configure itself, <clears throat> look for a satellite, and uh, pick its partner, as you would say. You should be good to go. So keen on that, that helps me quite a lot. That's actually, Look, I'm in two minds about it. I don't have a sat phone anymore. I'd rather use that, but there's very good reason not to use that instead of a sat phone because, or, or an EPIRB by the way, because at the end of the day, that needs electrical, right? That needs an inverter. If that shoots itself, you're fucked anyway. 
if your electrical shit is off, you're fucked anyway. So definitely would recommend getting it if you need to work on the road, as I do, or anything really for you want to stay in touch with society. There we go, it's doing a thing now. I've even brought one of these along. Flask. This right here. This has got some memory. So if any of you whiskey connoisseurs watch. Oh, uh, singleton, single malt. It's not the 28 year age. I think it's 18, I think. I can't remember. I have to look when I get home. Have a quick swig of that before you go to bed. Out like a lot. Sometimes I use a stretcher. Not all the time, but sometimes. Um, if I'm staying somewhere for a couple of days, I'll definitely uh, pull this one out. Reason being, I'm just too lazy to bend down to get in the swag. Pretty poor excuse, but... And it is quite comfy. It makes a bit of a bedding as well. A bit more of a sag, so... I don't know about you guys, but... I love a soft bed, a soft mattress. I hate hard stuff, so... Definitely all the padding I can get. So I'm sort of down <clears throat> in a valley at the moment, which is awesome because if it does get windy, it should go straight over the top because it's not a very big valley. It's very small with hills all around me. So it's kind of a bit of a, a hole more than a valley, but it's, it's not really a wind tunnel. It's, it's quite nice. Rookie move. Before you light the campfire, first things first, one of them. Also, if you haven't tried one of them, Summersby apple sparkling cider i'm not a cider man myself but damn they taste good i think i've been converted still love me great northern but i'm gonna sit back set up keep drinking me summer's be cider Ooh, good morning. Slept like an absolute log last night. Today, uh, I'm going to check out, I reckon, the Bendleby Rangers first. Hungry Rangers is more your four-wheel driving sort of stuff, and your Bendleby sort of stuff is more uh, easier sort of touring sort of stuff. Obviously, we're quite heavy. You know, we've got all the water, all the fuel, um, pretty much all the camping gear packed to go away for a few weeks um, in there. So it is heavy, so it is a tourer. So I'm gonna start with the Bendelby area, get a feel for it, see how the tracks are. It is rear locked, it's not front locked because uh, this isn't a GXL, so it doesn't come with the factory lockers being a workmate. So I've put in the Harrop E locker in the back. Um, obviously 35, three inch lift. Look, it's a capable car, I'm not gonna lie, but I'm not here to wreck it because I'm on my own. So traveling solo, you always gotta be careful. Definitely be careful, be smarter. You gotta drive home yet, so. You're with someone else, yeah, you could you could play around a bit more because if you get stuck, um, you know, or you or you break something, you've always got that extra car you can just tail with. Where this, no chances taken, no chances taken. So this is where we are, Camp Thirteen. It's called Easter Creek, just along this Gum Creek Drive. So what we might do, see these arrows up here. <clears throat> these are all one way so these trucks are all strictly one way so what we might do is we might come back out of here um and we might do this loop here this monument loop and all the way back through the kokoda trail and back down uh depending what time we get back to camp uh we might go back down to reception that's reception i want to try to get to parachilna as well so we'll see how we go definitely keen let's sort all these ones out and you have to excuse me i forgot a mug but yeti Saves the day again. This is a stubby cooler. Or a, t a yeah, a stubby cooler, you'd say. Good for tins, but how good's that? It's actually a mug. So I'm airing down to about 25 psi 
all round. Uh, it's generally pretty good. I usually do that in the high country as well, somewhere around that 20, 25 mark. So I'm a bit heavier in the back, so I'll probably go like a 23 or 22 PSI in the front, 25 in the rear. So we'll give that a go. Didn't get much rain this morning, only a, like a slight drizzle, so it's nothing that's going to impact impact us I don't think all the tracks let's get up to Sunset Ridge Lookout we'll drive the Sunset Ridge track back down uh, link up to Link Road I think it's cool so all the tracks are actually marked exactly like this one you're probably reading it backwards but it does say Sunset Ridge North South Ridge this way so Charlie and the team here at Bendelby have done an absolute awesome job of marking the tracks and if you follow the maps you'll be right Yeah, this Sunset Ridge track, I'm still in two-wheel drive. It's nothing hardcore, just just a normal fire trail, really, all the way up to the top of the mountain. Not steep at all. Um, you pretty much get a two-wheel drive up here. Uh, this is like a little bit of sort of water culverts, I guess you'd say, every now and again as you do. So, you know, probably not a lowered car, but you get like a Rad 4 up here or an X-Trail or something. So, nearly at the top few sculptures up here looks pretty good can't see anybody around but you get some great views from up here great views. i've done a few extra mods to the 76 as well so i'll put some intercooler fans on that from garage 76 uh, i'm not going to switch them on it's pretty cool my intake air temps 11 that's not the charge degree that's just the reading from the mass airflow from my obd port so obviously it's going to be a bit hotter than that quite a bit but it's not, I don't think it's going to be that extreme, it's pretty cold today, but if that uh, on my scan gauge intake air creeps up to probably 22 maybe, 25, 20, maybe 30 degrees, then I'll probably switch it on because your charge temp might be double, I don't know, so I really got to get a probe in there um, after the intercooler to see what sort of charge temps I'm looking at, but I haven't got around to it. And also, I've got a ECU shop ramble box <laughs> bit of a novelty if you ask me nothing to uh, crash hot but pretty cool to have I guess it's actually a throttle controller is what it is uh, it's actually not a bad throttle controller uh, what I did was I put it in economy mode or something it's got like nine settings and it actually makes a little bit of a difference it doesn't make the car any quicker by any means though no, that's not a tune it's nothing like that it's just a throttle response that's all it is so if you put your throttle down just a little bit and you're on sort of aggressive mode it'll open the butterfly uh, a lot quicker so then you, you feel like you're going to be quicker but you, you, you're definitely not uh, and then if you're down low it's a bit lazy that's about it uh, so it's great for crawling up hills if you're down low but i put it in economy mode nevertheless on the highway thinking let's see what this actually does and i was in cruise control most of the way and i went to overtake a truck and i put my foot down a little bit more i didn't change the uh the actual switch on it put my foot down a little bit more and it died in the ass it just died it didn't go anywhere and i thought this is not right um yeah it kills the throttle if you're in economy mode and you try and give it some so good tip switch straight out if you're going to get one of these and you're in economy and you want to overtake and you've only got a, a minimal amount of time maybe don't do economy economy is probably good for something like a two-lane highway made it to the top how cool is this sculpture right there would be where the sun sets that's due west but look at the bloody views you get that down there's the homestead i'll try and zoom in for you i'm filming on an iphone so it's not that great that's the homestead those ranges over there that's the hungry ranges and we're up here now this is still the southern end of the Bendelby ranges so we're going to head that away another sculpture up there but look um the team here has done a great job they've actually put dunnies everywhere and they're just sort of compost toilets so scoop a lime once you've done your business and good to go how's the views <laughs> I get to AM radio. So much bass. And in a Land Cruiser. <laughs> Factory speakers. AM radio. Fantastic. 
I actually do listen to AM radio. That's no joke. I like Ray Hadley. If anyone on here listens to Ray Hadley, kudos. What a guy. Mate, if anyone on here knows this station near Oruru, the town, AM765. Banging songs. <laughs> Banging. How good's that? now on the monument trail this place it really reminds me of the victorian high country um, the sheer steepness um, it's the way they've rated the tracks is pretty spot on this one's a six out of ten it's just steep that's all it is to me um but great scenic drives like 110 percent would recommend it's absolutely beautiful out here uh, lots of wildlife so yeah, we'll keep descending. It ain't my monster, but the right thing to do is just, if you see some rubbish, pick it up, throw it in the bin. Doesn't hurt anybody, except for the environment, I guess, and the places that we um, want to come to. So if you want to come to this place in the future, obviously accidents like this happen. I'm not going to be that person that rambles on and says, pick up your rubbish because you just should anyway but at the same time you know things fall out the back if you've got kids they might accidentally throw something out the window that you didn't know or anything really it, you could have left it on your tower gate accidentally and it's rolled off so look it is what it is when it's when it's one can but good thing if you see something just pick it up put it in your bin in your car and keep on going just walking up this hill now it's quite steep when you're on your own guys it's a really good idea just to walk it uh, because i don't have another vehicle with me just walk it have a good look at it pick your line where you think you should be doing as always on camera the hill just doesn't look as steep it never does it justice but trust me when i say it's actually quite a gradient link track this is probably one of the hardest tracks on Bendelby Ranges this is rated a 9 out of 10 it's pretty steep a few wombat holes just rear locker in and you'll be right Charlie the owner has expressed to me that he has seen multiple cars bust CVs from bouncing on these tracks so just take it easy, nice and slow, crawl up in first gear, you shouldn't have a problem. It's 
still on this link road. Um, just first gear, low range. Rear lockers are in. Just crawl up it. Uh, these Maxxis 35s, I've got 315 on. They're just crawling up, making their own way. It's pretty good. Yeah, it is quite steep and some uh, wombat holes or just. So definitely, if you don't have lockers on that one, pick your line. Definitely. I've been saying it quite a lot this trip guys, it's just pick your line, you know, if you're on your own, pick your line. Don't be silly. I mean, you can do what you want really, but for me, just don't be silly. Do the track, enjoy it, but just pick your right line, lock us in. And then momentum really is key on those ones because it's very shaly. So, you know, no matter how cold it is outside, you still can't go past cold beer. Or cold drink anyway. That's exactly what I'm gonna go do. Get a cold drink. It's just starting to rain now. The forecast says a few showers, so I'm not too sure yet if we head over to the Hungry Rangers yet. It's for 12 o'clock. Uh, Charlie did say, you know, you you need a full day in the Hungry Rangers if you want to go out there. So we've still got another station to get to yet, um, which is Rawsley Park. That's up in the Flinders. Apparently the showers here are unbelievable. I've got my hot tap dual cup. They are awesome as well uh, on the ARB awning shower tent. So I can use that as well. And I've got 100 litres of water. I reckon I've probably used 10 litres so far for three days traveling. So I'm doing pretty good with that. But uh, if you've got the facilities, mate, you might as well use it, eh? Hey? I just had a shower. 10 out of 10 in the shower. Fantastic. Gonna get back to camp now, light a fire. I should have seen some uh, sheep. Also, um, I actually haven't seen another car all day. So, I actually don't know if anyone else is here, but I've pretty much got a lot of it to myself by the look of it. It is a big place, so probably not. But um, since I haven't seen another car and I'm camping in the remote area, that's where Charlie's put me. So, yeah, I've driven past a lot of the other campsites, which is on this map that they give you have not seen any evidence of anyone else set up. Unbelievable. This weekend, as I've said, is coming up. It's a long weekend. It's gonna be packed. So I'm lucky I snuck in quite early with nobody here. I'm gonna head back to the homestead um, and the kiosk, the reception, because it is raining now. So I uh, might not hit the Hungry Rangers, unfortunately. Not on my own anyway, but I'm pretty keen. I did that link track and a few of the other tracks. They're rated nine out of 10, so. Not too bad. Uh, yeah, might go set up camp again, light the fire. See how bad the rain gets. I might go buy a couple of beers off Charlie and hang around under me awning. Drink some beer. Sounds like a horrible time, doesn't it? During recording this video, I spoke to Charlie on my way out and I asked if he had many people coming who were booked in for the long weekend. I was there, there was a maximum of three people. As of the Friday of the long weekend, 500 people were checking in. Just shows how amazing this place actually is. Get out, spread the word, go and check out Benderby Ranges. Guys, I can't stress enough how good this place actually is. My advice is if you're thinking about getting to Benderby Ranges, just go, you will not be disappointed. I haven't even scratched the surface of this entire place. But what I've seen so far has just been utterly amazing. Get out and enjoy it. Hey guys, thanks for watching the first step of the solo series. Um, I'm gonna sit around the fire now. Wait till it goes dark, sink a few beers and end up going to bed. So next week we're in the Flinders Ranges.